let's do this. Hello guys, how are you getting on? And today we're going to be talking about Ireland, who once again have failed to qualify for the World Cup. Uh, now I know I'm probably a little bit late for making this video, it happened, the match was on Tuesday there, the second leg. But um, better late than never and this is a video that certainly had to be made. So yeah, I'm going to break down what happened, what went wrong, what went well. Well actually, actually no, nothing went well. But yeah, I'm going to give my opinion on the game and what next for Irish football basically. Let's get into it. So, um, we're not used to qualifying for World Cups. We, um, last World Cup I can think of that we qualified for was 2002. But since I started watching football, we haven't qualified for a World Cup. Um, which gets fairly depressing after a while. The only major tournaments we have qualified for are Euro 2012, which we were shit at. And Euro 2016, which actually went very, very well. Got past the group and was knocked out by the initial runners-up, or the eventual runners-up, uh, France. So, we went into this qualifying campaign with high hopes, I think it's fair to say. I mean, we didn't have a very, very tough group. Um, Serbia and Wales were obviously our main two threats. Um, Georgia are a tough side to play away from home as well. But, um, basically the group went average enough. We threw away points against the likes of Georgia, Moldova, Serbia, which we shouldn't have thrown away. Hence we finished second and and made it through to the qualifiers. Um, Serbia ended up top of the group. But anyway, uh, when we got through to the qualifiers, uh, there was a mixed kind of uh, opinion on it. Um, you know, those fears that we might get the likes of either Portugal or Italy, who were both in there, that were possible opponents. Um, but we've got Denmark, who, on paper, are a very, very beatable side, I think it's fair to say. Um, but yeah, we went, the first leg was last Saturday in Copenhagen, and we grinded out a little draw. Didn't play very well, but... Got a decent result, obviously an away goal would have been nice to bring into the second leg. But, you know, what can you do? Sometimes you need to defend and Denmark just struggled to break us down on that particular night. So, let's move on to the second leg. And as I'm sure you're all aware, we were defeated 5-1 at home. Now, I'm not saying I went into the game expecting to win. Martin O'Neill has a very, very good record at the Aviva, so you would have expected a far better performance from the team than there actually was. But yeah, what's funny was, we started off very, very well. Uh, Robbie Brady crosses a free kick into the box. The striker Jorgensen, who was back defending, tries to clear it, flicks it in towards his own penalty area. Schmeichel comes a long, long way to try and claim a ball that, in reality, he was never going to win. Um, Shane Duffy beats him to it and heads it into pretty much an empty net. 1-0, unreal start, I think it was like 4 minutes gone and we were 1-0 up. Um, and then for the next 20 minutes, for the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes of the game, we looked likely to score again. I mean, we missed a couple of opportunities, McLean missed a really good chance, Didn't should have really hit the target with it. But then, it started to all go downhill. We got complacent and started to let Denmark back into the game. Um, Gave them a lot more possession. Gave the likes of Ericsson far too much room. Um, although he didn't have... He wasn't in the game as much in the first half as he was in the second. But he you know, he got himself a goal in the first half. We'll get on to that in a minute. But firstly, Denmark went and equalised from a corner. Which was taken short. right? And I'm going to start off with Harry, Harry Arter. Um, admittedly, it's a two-on-one situation. Sisto, the left winger from... He plays with Celta Vigo from Denmark. Uh, takes on Harry Arter and he comes at him straight. Now, my dad said it at the time, and I agree, if an under 9 or 10 team, or maybe a little bit more than that, but maybe if like an under 11 or 12 team were defending like that, you wouldn't be very happy with them. Straight on, but you need, he needed to be side on. Gets megs, gets absolutely skinned by Sisto, who puts in a good cross across the penalty area, and Andres Christensen of Chelsea gets a touch on it, but it, it hit the post, and then... Cyrus Christie, in an attempt to clear it, hits it into his own net. Um, uh, I don't know what to make of the goal, to be honest. It was diabolical defending from start to finish. And then 
Harry Arter was poor for it first off, but Christie really should have done better on the line. Didn't. 1 1, an away goal for Denmark, and suddenly you could feel the atmosphere definitely did uh, change within the stadium. The first 20 25 minutes, Ireland dominated, and you know, after the goal, the crowd was hopping, but this just killed the crowd dead. And now within five minutes, it was 2 1 to Denmark. Um, Ireland have the ball actually in the middle third of the pitch, but in the Denmark half. Um, and Steve, uh, Robbie Brady passed it back to Stephen Ward. A lazy enough pass, but Ward has been one of our most consistent players. I'm going to say that. He's been one of our most consistent players over the course of the qualifying campaign. But he just had a very, very bad night. Cost us two goals, and this was the first of them. Uh, he takes a heavy touch. I think it was Yusuf Poulsen or someone on the right-hand side. Takes it off him. And two, play, two passes later, it's in the back of the net. Um, the whole Irish defence got dragged across. To try and cover Ward, and you have to say, smash and finish by Ericsson in off the underside of the bar. And in showing his class, um, we knew about him. He was very, very quiet in the first leg, but um, yeah, very, very good finish. Had to rate it, but again, a very, very avoidable goal, similar to the first one. So we went into half time, 2 1 down, and at this point, you're thinking, what is Martin O'Neill going to do? to try and change it. He had options on the bench, you look at Houlihan, you look at Long, although Long hasn't scored since February, players who can come on and sort of make a difference. Um, oh yeah, another, but before I move on, I'd have to question Martin O'Neill why he didn't keep O'Dowda on, because, or even play O'Dowda, he didn't play any minutes against Denmark in the second leg, but in the first leg, he looked like the only player that had that little bit of flair and looked like they were really going to hurt uh, Denmark in the first leg, was on the bench, didn't even feature in the second leg, which I'd have to question. And I don't usually question Martin O'Neill because he's he has had good success with us since he's come in. I wouldn't really ever question his tactics. But anyway, at half time he decides to make a couple of changes. And those two changes are Harry Arthur comes off, which I think is fair enough. Uh, he got absolutely skinned for the first goal and just wasn't having a very good game in general. So he takes him off. And then he takes off David Myler, who, admittedly, likewise to Arthur, wasn't having his best game. But he took him off, which left Hendrick, who may as well not have been playing, and Robbie Brady as our defensive midfielders. We had no one in the hole where Eriksson was playing, and that hole in the second half. A few minutes into the start of the second half then... Um, Denmark passing it around us, we not really getting a tackle in. Eriksson finds himself in acres of space about 20, 21, 22 yards out from goal. Lovely left foot caress finish into the corner. 3-1 and at this point, you know, it's game over. Um, and Ireland are in big trouble now. Oh yeah, I also didn't mention, he brought on, he did bring on Wes Hula in a half time, but he also brought on Aidan McGeady. Um... People who know me personally will know that I hate Aidan McGeady. Um, personally because he promises so much and never delivers anything. That man has 90 caps for his country. Just keep that in mind. And he can't cross a ball. I've never seen him cross a ball. Ever. And he has 90 caps for the country. Just think about that for a minute. But yeah, moving on. 3-1. And you're thinking at this point, what does Ireland need? What? Three? Three goals. Because... Denmark have two away goals, there was no, never any chance of extra time, so we needed to get ourselves back into the game. Uh, brings on Long a while later for Murphy, um, but before that, Eriksson gets his hat-trick. After a cross from the left-hand side is another the second mistake by Ward at night. He tries to clear it with his right, makes an absolute hames of it, falls to Eriksson, and I mean, what a finish. He just smashes the top corner. I know the chance was presented to him very easily by Ward. But you still have to finish it, and Eriksson on the night really did show his quality, and three absolutely outstanding finishes, and you know he deserved man of the match uh, for many reasons. But three absolutely unbelievable finishes in Ireland at four-one are dead at this stage. Uh, we bring on Long to try and salvage something. I don't know, try and get a goal, but he'd used up his three changes. He'd wasted one of them on McGeady. Uh, Hulahan was. Pretty much not involved. Um, Long had one chance which he tried to dink over Schmeichel. Got it over him but over the goal as well. 
Um, so the gold trope continues for him. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it happened. The event that made me laugh at my own country. And that was when Nicholas Bentner came on. And he came on to some uh, level of approval from the Danish fans. And he came on and made a difference. He runs into the box. James McLean, who looked like he was going to get sent off for a lot of the second half. He was going after Sisto for the majority of the second half. Clips Bentner's heels. He goes down in the box. Penalty. Um, at the Danish fans end, uh, at this point, the Aviva is nearly cleared out, basically. And, yeah, Bentner takes the penalty, converts it, very decent penalty. And, yeah. But, yeah, Bentner makes a 5-1 and makes the night even more depressing than it already was. Um, <laughs> it takes some man to make it even more depressing, but he managed it. So... That's the end for Ireland's World Cup hopes. Um, what's going to happen next with Irish football? Who knows? Would I get rid of Martin O'Neill? No. I think a lot of the players need to look themselves in the mirror. But there's just not many great young Irish players out there at the minute, I'm, I'm afraid. But um, we'll see what happens in the, in the near future. Something has to, has to happen. Uh, the style of play certainly needs to change. But uh, thankfully, that's no more international football until the new year. The next international breaks in March, I believe. And club football returns this weekend. My club, Chelsea, are playing away to West Brom. But uh, some of the highlights, or some of the biggest games that are happening this weekend are Arsenal versus Tottenham, North London Derby is on tomorrow from half 11. And then the Madrid Derby is on as well as Atletico take on Real. So... A lot of club football to look forward to, but not an awful lot to look forward to the Irish fans in the next couple of years. But we'll see what happens. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please leave a like. Comment down below what you thought of the match. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you later.